when I say to people I've stopped flying, they laugh nervously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And certainly some of my colleagues as well haven't right. been entirely happy right. um, with, with, with what I'm doing. I mean, I wouldn't say I haven't been supported, but, but certainly, like, same reaction, right? You know, because it's almost a challenge to them. And actually, that's what I am kind of challenging my colleagues yeah. to do something like this. What we're doing here is trying to get to some place in the future, or trying to imagine some place in the future where we're living differently. Yeah. Um, and perhaps part of that living differently is not flying. Yeah. Anywhere yeah. near as much, or, or yeah. travelling more slowly. And then there are these great stories, you know, um, of uh, people like Einstein. Um, there's a physicist called um, Chandrasekhar uh -huh. um, who who did some other work, um, early work on around black holes. Right. Um, and and they would do these things on boat rides. You know, right. you'd, you'd read about how Chandrasekhar would get on his get on the on the um, the cruise liner, you know, to yeah. to head from. Um, India to uh, to London or from London to New York, and you know over those weeks yeah. to months that they spent on the boat, they were they were working and they did a lot of their work while travelling yeah. in the slower fashion. The analogy I kind of make is uh, uh, if you're uh, if you're in the bathroom with a laptop <laughs> and someone's in the lounge and they dump they dump ten liters of petrol in the lounge and set it on fire. Right. Yeah. Right. You're sitting there. If you've got all the numbers, you could figure out. You know, if you had all the variables, you, know, you could figure out when that fire was going to reach you. Yeah. That's not a good use of your time. Where you say by sticking to the facts, science communicators risk having little or no impact on public opinion or behaviour. And I thought that's interesting. That's kind of a line that. That joins both of these things up, really. Yeah. Um, I got a call on a, I think it was a, um, from memory, Sunday night. Yeah. You know, could I talk about the Fukushima um, uh, meltdown mm -hmm. um, that, that that was going on? And um, my first reaction is no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything. And what what had actually happened was I do have a I have a collaboration with a scientist in the UK. Right. And we had done some work, you know, years ago on nuclear waste storage, um, yeah. on materials that you might use that could, you know, basically keep nuclear waste contained for tens of thousands of years. Okay. You know, how do you do that? And and, and he'd gone on to become a um, uh, a, a bigwig in the UK. Right. And so he was actually one of the global scientists who was actually the go-to person. He was the BBC. If you could solve that, that would be really good. <laughs> well, <Right>. yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Can you stop wasting your time on Twitter and solve that for us? We actually we did, we did really come up with some solutions, but actually as, with a lot <laughs> of these you. things, it turns out to be a political... <laughs> well, problem rather than a technical yeah, I'd problem. Appreciate, yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> anyway, okay. but he, so he's he's a big wig nuclear scientist in the UK now, and he was doing a lot of the media around Fukushima. And when he got a call from the New Zealand media, he said, "Oh, I've got this old friend Sean in New Zealand, right. and he can he can talk about this stuff." And I really wasn't prepared, and so my first reaction was, "Well, no, I'm not going to talk about this." Okay. Um, but then, then actually, you know, I thought about it, and I thought, "Well, actually, who's who is out there?" You know, if not me, who? who and that's be? kind of a question. When when scientists read my book, that's the question I want them to ask, actually. Yeah. If not me, then who? Right? And if you can't answer that, then it's you. Yeah. Again, you, you just don't know yeah. whether the big or little things you do will make a difference, but you no. know whether you did them. Anyway, but the one of the things that was really is quite shocking about that the Fukushima story is that Japanese scientists had done, you know, they, they'd worked out the risks of this power station being hit with a tsunami. Right. And they were, it was about a third. They'd, you know, they'd, tr they'd written their reports. You know, yeah. that we started with that quote on, you know, around facts. You know, yeah. are facts enough for scientists? Is it enough for us to p produce facts? And they bitterly regretted the fact that they just they had just written reports. They'd handed these over to the government and they'd never gone public. They'd never gone to a journalist. The um, equivalent of the Royal Society in Japan, which is, I think, is the Japanese Society for Science, mm -hmm. um, they uh, they modified their code of conduct in response. Mm -hmm. um, and so in their code of conduct, it's now pretty clear that, that as a scientist, you now have a responsibility to challenge the government where you see that sort of thing being done. 
a lot of the crown in- crown research institutes like Niwa, um, they're under pressure to sell their services. Yeah. Right. So there's there's kind of two things going on there. They've got to sell their services, so they'll have commercial clients. Um, you know, for 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 Niwa, um, offshore um, exploration has been quite an important service that they've provided. Yeah. They have that the research vessel. Genius and make, as well. And Genius as, yeah. as well. And yeah. both those organisations, um, you know, surveying our natural resources yeah. by, you know, being paid for by commercial entities has been an important source of revenue for them. Yeah. And, and that revenue is important for their bottom line. You know, if they lose it, if they don't work um, with those organisations, that's, that's money off their bottom line. That's fewer scientists employed. Yeah. That's less science, and so there's a kind of a bargain that they have to make yeah. with themselves um, about how much of that stuff are we going to do in yeah. order to just you know in order to then do the good science that we probably yeah. think is is of more public value. Yeah. That's been a real tension in the CRIs that again I don't think a lot of the public understand. No, um, but actually also undermines their credibility yeah. um, because you know will they really? challenge you know are they really going to stand up to uh, a mining company um, yeah. who wants to damage some um, some conservation land in order to you know to, to extract some minerals um, or some oil you know you, you, you're going to have your doubts even even if even if they do from time to time yeah. you're still going to have your doubts because they are you know you can see there's a revenue stream there and for some people that's that entirely undermines what any science that they do any kind of link the commercial work will will make it suspect. Um, so there's that commercial drama, and then I think what what happened, and, and that's been there since the CRIs were created. Yeah, you know, twenty twenty five years ago. This is a weird thing about uh, the problem itself. There's a um, uh, there's a philosopher you might have heard of him. Um, who wrote a book called Hyper Objects. Uh, now that I'm telling you, I can't think of the guy's <laughs> name, but I'll write it. Um, um, but uh, his his position was that uh, climate change is so big, it's so uh, d- diffuse and dispersed, um, uh, it touches everything, it's viscous, it, touch- it sticks to everything it touches, uh, and it, it spreads across space and time in such a way that it's too big for us to see properly. Mm. Um, uh, and that's uh, that's why we have so much trouble with it. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so uh, here's an example um, in Taranaki. So the um, uh, scientists like Lyndon um, at um, the event here at uh, uh, Climate Justice Taranaki mm. really head along to um, submissions, uh, EPA submissions, to talk about um, uh, exploration. Work that's it's, it's gonna it's on the box. It's gonna happen. They have this process. The uh, uh, public can come and make submissions and talk about um, pieces of the work uh, and whether or not those pieces ought to happen, whether mm. that's safe. Um, um, but according to the rules, uh, according to the, the EPA and the EZ uh, uh, and all the structure around that, uh, all they're really allowed to stick to is. Um, that tiny little thing. So the last one, the OMV application was, um, if I understand it correctly, uh, they're uh, at sea on a platform, they're doing some drilling, uh, and if there's an accident and they spill some stuff and they clean up what they've spilled, there might be a need to rinse off the residue and that might wind up in the ocean. So mm. can we get permission to do that? Mm. So, so that's the only window that a scientist can come along and say, uh, like Lyndon, who's like, yeah. I'm a coral scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's no yeah. corals to look at anymore because, <laughs> because of climate change, because yeah. of this yeah. very thing. Um, but we can't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one thing I ask everyone um, is if you could magically have one thing, uh, what would it be? The magic, magic silver <laughs> bullet. Yeah, if there was one thing that, that you could just have tomorrow, there's a magically. Oh, doesn't matter. yeah. If we could, if we could um, split water with light. Split water with light. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is a effective efficient um, photovoltaic cell. That's, that's oh. that we can so we can make hydrogen from 
fuel from um, from water using sunlight. Okay. That would um, do and do that efficiently because we, we can do it just inefficiently at the moment. Right. Um, and that would make a lot of our problems go away. It'd just give vast amounts of energy. Yeah, 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 and clean, clean renewable energy. 